the one thing I tell my team is it's super important to find one thing that is going to change your business. So some of the things I'm going to tell you aren't necessarily going to fit for everyone's business model um, and or anyone everyone's business. Um, plus, it's really amazing to be super great at one thing. So maybe that's Facebook, maybe that's Instagram, maybe that's Pinterest, maybe that's LinkedIn. I can tell you I don't use Pinterest like I should. Sometimes I'll go on there and mess around, um, but I don't really use it to find cold um, market leads. Um, I just find I waste more time on there. So I choose different avenues. So tonight I wanted to talk to you guys about some of those different avenues. If you have questions as I'm talking, feel free to ask. Um, I'll introduce myself first. Um, my name is Amanda Larson. I am a senior executive and I um, live in Arizona. Lived here uh, about six years, born and raised in Washington. Um, and love the heat. Um, so I've been doing Jamberry since, um, yes, I can. Um, I've been doing Jamberry since April 2014 and um, have been just doing Jamberry for a year tomorrow. Um, so I quit my day job a year ago um, tomorrow, which is awesome. So a Sorry, sometimes I have internet issues. Um, a lot of these things that I'm going to tell you, I learned from my day job um, and have implemented them into Jamberry. So um, I first off want to tell you guys my LinkedIn strategy because that for me um, is one that is interesting. It's new. Not a lot of people are using it for cold market leads or for their business. Um, so... If you don't know what LinkedIn is, it is a basically like Facebook for professionals. It's an area or a site for professionals to be able to network with other professionals. So when I go out um, and I do networking events, which I will talk about, um, I find those people on LinkedIn and I link them because I want them in my network um, for a couple of reasons. So um, when you go to LinkedIn, if you are new to it, you'll want to set up your profile with all of your business information. Um, I have all my past history, plus I have Jamberry on there. Um, and you want to start finding people that are in your current network. So you can do that through uploading um, your, like linking it to Google. It will find anyone who's on LinkedIn with Google or the email addresses um, that you have in your Gmail or your Yahoo or your whatever mail service you're using. Um, and this will allow you to start linking to people's networks. Um, so the way that I use LinkedIn is solely for um, recruiting and looking for recruiting leads. I don't use it to sell. I don't use it to book parties. I'm just looking for cold market recruiting leads. Now, does that turn into sales? Does that turn into bookings? Yeah, sometimes that turns into bookings um, or sales, but I tend to start with the opportunity and then I work my way down to sales and a sample from there. So, for example, with this new launch in Mexico, I do a search in LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, I can even show you. So when you are on LinkedIn, there is this advanced search button and you can search a ton of different things. What I typically do is I will search second connections. Now a second connection is going to be someone, um, for example, if you were LinkedIn friends with me, it would be someone that, someone that I am friends with that you may not be linked to yet. Um, you can search by location, so I know that there's people in Florida, we have people from Massachusetts, Cape Cod, Canada, Rhode Island, Hawaii, Connecticut. Um, you can search for your local location, so you would add that location here. Um, you can also select any of these things. So if you want to find people that have common interests of you, maybe people that have worked for similar companies as you have, um, people that have gone to similar universities that you have. Um, I have been searching, though, professional language. So I don't know about you guys. 
Um, I know your leaders probably are looking to expand their business into Mexico. So I have been looking for bilingual professionals to help me grow my Latina market here in the U.S. as well as obviously in Mexico. So you can put in whatever location you want and then you would select Spanish. Let me just add a location so you guys can see. We'll do Phoenix. And then you just come over here and hit search. And obviously it's going to come up with men, it's going to come up with women. Um, and what I do is, like this person would be a great, um, probably Jamberry consultant. She's an executive recruiter um, in human resources, so she does what we do every day. She talks to people about different opportunities. And you can see I have 20 shared connections with her. So that means that 20 people that I know directly, or maybe that I've networked with, know um, Christine. So I'm going to connect with her. And it's going to send her an invite saying, Amanda wants to connect with you. Um, just like it would on Facebook when you connect with someone. It'll be like, oh, Amanda wants to connect with you. Well, usually what people do is they're going to go to my LinkedIn profile and they're going to be like, who is this Amanda girl? Why does she want to connect with me? Um, she might just scroll through and say, like, oh, she's in Arizona too. Sure, I'll connect with her. Um, so once, I should turn this back on. Once people connect with me, if you go up here to my network and connections, this is going to show you everyone that's recently connected with me right here. Or anyone that I have sent, um, you know, a connection request to. So what I do is I then go through and I message these people. And I just, so um, once I connect with someone, I'm going to send them a message. And it is going to be the most simplest message ever. Um, yeah, sorry, I totally kicked myself out. I went to push the turn around the camera button and a Facebook notification appeared and it went there instead. So I apologize. Um, but when someone connects with me, I send them a basic message and I don't send it I don't send a super spammy message like, hey, I saw you were in recruiting and I would love to connect with you about this opportunity I have because you should do it. I make so much money and it's so much fun and I have so many friends because that's annoying and nobody wants to hear that. Um, so I send a simple message like this and I can give um, Kristen um, this verbiage or some similar verbiage for you guys to use. So I connected with this girl, Kendall, and I just said, hey, Kendall, I know we don't know each other, because we don't, um, but I found you while doing some research on Spanish-speaking professionals in the Phoenix area. I am an entrepreneur in the process of expanding my business into the Latina market, and I am looking for a rock star to partner with. I was wondering if you might be able to help me out. I'm sure you're well connected and might know some Spanish speaking professionals because remember I searched that specific criteria so you would tailor these messages to you're looking to connect with people in Puerto Rico you're looking to connect with just local professionals um, is there anyone that comes to mind that has sales or leadership experience that might not be exactly where they want to be financially and might be able to help me out with the project um, it can be extremely lucrative opportunity for the right person. Usually out of, if I send 20 of these messages, I usually hear back from 7 to 10 people. So it's not a horrible percentage, um, but it at least gets the conversation started. So that's one way that I utilize um, social media to find cold market um, leads that I've never met. Now, Kendall's local to me, so I always offer, like, I would love, to, I know you don't know me, you know, I'd love to meet you for coffee, I kind of explain a little bit more about what I do, um, if they ask specifically what company, um, I mean, I have the company on my LinkedIn profile, so most people go there, um, but some people ask, um, you know, more specifics, and I'll tell them a little bit, but I don't want to just, you know, info dump a bunch of vomit and then have them run away. 
So I try to give them enough to pique their interest to keep talking to me. Um, and if they say they don't know anyone or maybe they say they're not interested in the opportunity, I still invite them to follow me on Facebook or um, my you know, Periscope or my Instagram so that I can kind of keep Jamboree in front of them. And if they're local, I say I'd love to invite you, um, you know, to a Starbucks and we can, I can show you at least how the product works. Maybe then you'll be able to see someone that, you know, might love the product or maybe the opportunity. Um, so I have signed up one person from LinkedIn and I, I usually try to connect with like five people a day and then I usually try to send out, you know, at least five messages a day. So, it, but it all depends on who, you know, um, connects with me. But that way it kind of keeps the ball rolling. And I feel like this is very much sorting. I am just finding people who might have some interest in the opportunity that I don't know. And maybe I would never run across Kendall in real life or, you know, real life off of social media. So it's just another way to utilize a different platform. So, um... I also want to talk about um, Instagram and your Facebook business pages. I'm going to talk a little bit about networking because that is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing ever. And then referrals. So um, Instagram and business pages. Someone who is brilliant, her name is Ashley Rawls. Um, I don't know if this is her idea or she got it from someone, but she shared with me that on her Instagram posts, anyone that likes her Instagram posts, she direct messages them. So when you um, are on Instagram and you click on the person's name, it will actually give you a drop down sometimes that you can just say, send this person a message. And the message is so simple. It would be like, hey, Kristen, I saw that you loved my um, U.S. relief wrap picture. I looked at your um, Instagram profile. You look so fun. You know, have you ever tried Jamberry before? They're like, no. And I'm like, what? They're so amazing. So it's just another message to kind of get that person talking to you. So I know a lot of us, and I did this literally for two years. So if you do this, that's totally fine because I've done, I've done it forever. A lot of us use Instagram as a passive way of marketing, and we use our Facebook business page as a passive way of marketing, right? We get these really cute nail fees, and we're like, oh, look at me, boss lady, like, and we post it and we put a really cute caption and we do all these hashtags and then we're like, why has no one posted, wanted to book a party with me? Why has no one messaged me to join my team? Do they not like me? But really, you know, we spend a lot of time posting these things and we're not getting a lot in return. But it's really um, kind of that passive marketing. So if your customers are on your Instagram, you're feeding them more information and you know, more ideas on what they could, their next purchase could be, but we want to get into that cold market. So that cold market is going to require prospecting. So that's kind of what I talked about on LinkedIn. But on Instagram, you could come out a way um, or a direction of recruiting first. Um, on Instagram, it's a little bit more fun. It's not as, you know, used for, you know, professional networking, so to speak. So I use Instagram more as a way to get product um, and get bookings from people. So um, just a simple message of, hey, I love your profile. Thank you so much for loving my post. You know, are you following me? Um, I post, you know, I tend to post a lot of these things. Do you tend to like a lot of X, Y, and Z pictures? You know, I looked at your profile. It seems like you love dogs. I love dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? You're just trying to create friends. And people normally like pictures that they like, right? Like, I love Frenchies. And I feel like I would like any Frenchie picture that there is. So if that can be that one small commonality that I have with someone that links me to them that I can then be like, oh, and have you tried Jamberry? Then they can be like, no. And I'm like, perfect. Let me send you some. Um, do I do Instagram parties? I have only done like three Instagram parties. Um, they were okay. I don't, I, they were really good learning experiences. 
I don't think I personally, as a consultant, am great at remembering to post all the time on Instagram. So for me personally in my business structure, it's not really something that I um, tend to focus on a lot. I am much more of like a two-day or a three-day Facebook partier or an in-home partier. I am not a natural blonde, but I feel sometimes like I just can't get it together with um, rolling Facebook parties or Instagram parties because I just forget. So I tend to stay with things, um, obviously, that are a little bit more in my comfort zone that I just know have been successful for me in the past. Um, but there are some rockin' Instagram parties out there. I do have um, one party I did for Canada Relief that I'm super proud about, got a couple sales from that, and that was just for the public. Like, I was the hostess, so I can always give Kristen that information, too, if you guys want to check it out. Um, but yeah, it's totally to be honest with you. Um, so, same thing with Facebook business page. So, if you guys can afford to, um, and you're doing it correctly, and, um, you know, boost a post on Facebook, but um, just... Be careful, you know, don't spend money that you don't have and don't spend money if you're not seeing return from it. So maybe try it once and then if you're not really getting anything from it, um, maybe try something different. But um, Facebook business pages are the same thing as Instagram. It can be a great way to have customers and your warm market follow you and be, you know, super stoked on what you're doing they can, you can give them all of the new information and you can give them everything that's coming out in the new catalog and you can, you know, tell them what your favorite lacquer is of the week or whatever you use your business page for. But there will always be people that are not your Facebook friend, family, or they maybe aren't even, uh, uh, they don't even like your business page. Those are the people you want to message. If someone likes a business page post, I invite them to like my business page. When you go to, let's see if I can pull it up without totally screwing up again. Um, when you go to your business page, let me see if I can find one. Um, you can click from the computer, you can click on, okay, I'm gonna show you, hopefully no notifications come up. Okay, so on a business page, you can click right here on um, the people that like it. So let's see if I can find one. Okay, so this one, for example. So this person, Denise Walsh, or Harris Walsh, she liked my post. I'm going to invite her to my business page. Then it's going to actually give me a notification that says, Denise liked your business page. And then you can message Denise and be like, hey, thanks for liking my business page. Have you tried Jamberry? I noticed we have a couple mutual friends. And I always make sure that those mutual friends aren't on my team or don't sell Jamberry also. Because um, I'm not trying to poach people. Um, but I just want to make sure if she hasn't tried Jamberry, I ask, how did you find my business page? Did it just come up in your profile? Um, maybe one of your friends likes my page. And then I try to start the relationship from there. Hey, would you like to try a sample? Hey, um, let me send you a catalog. Oh, you have a huge wish list? Great, let's host a party. And um, with Facebook, depending on how, comfort, how comfortable you feel and your comfort level, you can always start with the opportunity and then work your way backwards from there too. So um, for example, I boosted a pay post about Mexico and the Mexican launch and um, looking for bilingual uh, individuals. And I messaged those people right away and said, hey, thanks for liking my post. Um, would you like more information about this launch that's happening? Because they liked to post about the opportunity. So also tailor your messages that you're messaging them um, based on the posts that you have on your business page. Any questions so far? I know I'm talking really fast. Okay, so my most favorite thing and topic in the world is networking. So at the job that I left, my day job, I hated it. Like, I loved my boss. I just was not meant 
did not have the purpose and was not put on this earth to talk about IT services. Not at all. But what I did get from this position and what the favorite part of this position was, was networking. So I was a hunter, which if you've ever been in sales, you know what that is. If not, you're basically a hunter. You're going out in the woods and you're looking for animals and you're trying to get them and you're trying to bring them back. So it's like in the sales world, I'm trying to go out and I'm trying to find new prospects. I'm trying to not kill them because that sounds really bad, but I'm trying to get them and I'm trying to bring them back. Um, so networking is great for this. If you are having a hard time breaking into your cold market, you need to start networking. So what does that look like? There are so many different ways that you can network. Um, one thing that I would suggest, depending on your location, is um, starting with your local chamber of commerce. So every city has a chamber of commerce, and most of the time that chamber will have events. Um, usually chambers of commerce allow you to come to two events for free before um, you have to pay and join. So I always go for free for the two events, like for me, Phoenix. Well, Phoenix has one, Scottsdale has one, Glendale has one, Mesa has one, Gilbert has one. There's, so there's literally, you know, six chambers of commerce around me. So I go to them, and I don't go networking with the intention of, I am going to go to this event for an hour, and I am going to sign someone up for Jamboree. Because if you have that expectation, you'll be really disappointed every single time. So networking is a great way to break into your cold market, but it takes a lot longer to develop um, those relationships and to develop those leads. So um, with networking, you want to go in with the expectation of, I want to meet like two to three amazing people that I am going to want to follow up with and maybe set a coffee date up with. So when you network, um, first I'll talk about how, and then I'll talk about where you find these events. So when you go to network, you don't just want to say, um, hi, I'm Amanda. I'm with Jamberry. Here's my business card. Let's talk sometime. Cause most people will take your card and they'll be like, who was that girl? And they'll throw it in the garbage. You want to create like a connection. It's like dating, but for professionals, it's really weird. Um, so you want to create a relationship. So we have a great product where we don't have to network with men. We don't even have to talk to men if we don't want to. Obviously, men are usually, for the most part, married to women or have girlfriends or moms or sisters and stuff like that. So men are also great people to talk to when networking because they may know someone. But again, that's going to be a lot longer destination um, to get a booking, a sale, or someone to join. So I typically look for the women in the room um, and I just go up and I say, hi, my name's Amanda. Um, is this your first time coming to this event? And they'll usually say, no, you know, I've been coming here, blah, blah, blah. And I try to ask a ton of questions because people will always remember how you make them feel, but no one will ever remember what you said. And when you go to networking events, nobody will even care that you do Jamboree unless they've tried it before and they love it. But they want to get to know you as a person and they want to get to know and trust you before they do business with you and before they give you a referral, which is why I said it takes a while to create that relationship. Um, so one thing I would I will say don't do at a networking event is just pass your cards out to everyone and collect cards from everyone and then go home and put all those cards into a newsletter and spam those people. Don't do that. Because then you start to create a relationship um, with all of those people as you're the spammy Jamberry lady. And you don't want to do that. Because when people network, they usually network in more than one place. Which means these people can open doors for you with other people and other events. Or they can quickly shut the door for you to people and other events. Um, so just going with a smile, um, you know, shake their hand, 
talk to them about how long they've been coming here, be inquisitive, you know, what do you do for business, how long have you been doing it, do you find this event very successful, where else do you network? Um, I am new to networking. People love vulnerability, right? And people love to help you, especially women. So if you find women out networking, they will want to like hold your hand and skip off into the sunset with you and show you everything there is to know about every event wherever you are. So um, ask them, where do you network? Where have you found business? Um, what's been successful for you? Because you'll start to find people that want to help you and then those are the people that you're like, great, I would love to give you my card and I would love to get your information because I want to follow up with you so that I can talk more about what it is you do, how I can help refer people to you or how we might be able to work together in the future. So networking is also all about that Kind of give and receive. So I want to help you and your business. I want to be able to help connect you um, to other people that will benefit your business. And then, you know, likewise, you want to hope, hope that you'll get some um, referrals in return. So that's like really basic networking 101. But where do you find these events? So I mentioned Chambers of Commerce. Um, if you go to meetup.com, there are some events there. Now, meetup groups are great. Some are very hobby-based. So like, oh, we're the painters of Cape Cod and we, you know, get together once a week and we paint. Or um, in Scottsdale, they do wine, like yappy hour with their dogs. It's like a real thing. Um, so it all depends on your hobbies and what interests you. Like I would never go to, um, like I like to read books, but I don't necessarily always like to talk about books. So I don't know if I would join a book club. Um, but meetup.com is great. I would search women networking groups or women professionals um, in the, the header. And then you can set your zip code with however far you're willing to drive. If you're in a small town, set that how far you're willing to drive a little bit further. Um, and it's worth driving once a week or even once a month if you find a really good um, networking group. Also, and I will remind myself to share these because they're like weird spelling, um, but there's NABO, which is North American Women Business Owners Association that's what it stands for. Um, and then there's also eWomen Network is a great one. But if you just Google your city or the largest city near you, um, women networking, you'll usually find a ton of different events. Now, will every event be great? No. Some you'll go home and you'll be like, there was literally like two people there and nobody cared about me and you know, nobody even talked to me. Um, but then you'll find really great events too. And those are the ones that you want, those are the ones that you want to invest in. And those are the ones that you want to go back to. So you don't just want to be a drive by networker. So you go once and you never go back because you didn't get anything. Um, it's okay if you do that, as long as you meet a couple of great people and you try to further those relationships and maybe try out some other events. Um, there was also something else here. Um, if you're in any clubs, that's also a great way um, to figure out, you know, what else people do. Like this lady just joined my team and she is in a book club and she also raises honeybees and she also like crochets. So she is going to hit up those three areas um, looking for groups because that's what she enjoys. So she's going to try to connect with people that way. Um, and that brings us to referrals. So you can get referrals through networking and you can get referrals through your friends and family. Um, and that is a great way to break into your cold market. Um, Sarah Robbins, I think is the one that says this, but people are either connectors, consultants, or customers. So there's three C's. Um, and so I truly look at people if they're not going to join my team, that's totally fine. Um, but maybe they can be my customer. And if they don't want to be my customer, 
I have the most destructive dog in the world. So if you ever follow me on Periscope, you'll probably find him eating all of my stuff. But um, people are connectors. People love to help. So especially during times like this launch that we're doing, right, into the U.S. US Latina market or um, into Mexico, I don't speak Spanish. I'm like, hola, mi nombre es Amanda. That's all I know. Um, so I have been asking every single person I come in contact with, hey, who do you know that is bilingual? Who do you know that speaks Spanish? Who do you know that... Who do you know that um, has family in Mexico or travels to Mexico? I, can you connect me with them? Who are they? Oh yeah, my brother. Great. What's his name? His name's Ted. Great. What's Ted's number? Um, don't ask. Oh, do you think I could have his name? They'll be like, oh, let me ask him first. Or if you say, great, do you think Ted would be okay if I called? They'll be like, uh, let me ask him first. Just be assertive. What's his name? Ted. Great. How do you spell that? T-E-D? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's his last name? Great. How do you spell that? And what's his number? Oh, his number is this. Or um, can I find him on Facebook? Is that a great way to connect with Ted? Sure. It is. Not necessarily looking for Ted to join our team, but maybe Ted has a wife or um, a business partner or anybody, you know, that also speaks Spanish or... So referrals is all about kind of creating this chain of people and getting outside of that warm market, that circle. So if you guys are new and you are newer and you have um, friends that are like, oh, I'm so excited that you do Jamberry. That's so great. And you're like, awesome. I have September 12th and the 22nd to have a party. Which one works for you? And they're like, oh, no, I don't do parties. And you're like, okay, great. Who do you know that goes and gets their nails done? Oh, well, my friend Susie. And you're like, great. How do I connect with Susie? What's her number? Um, so if people tell me no, I always ask for a referral. Always. Because if I can't get where I want to in business with them or their help, I want their friend's help. And Sometimes I even say, you know, your friend, um, they might, this might be life changing for them. They may forever be indebted to you because you have given them the opportunity to be a part of something way bigger than where they're at in life right now. Sure, I will write it down, Lori. Um, yeah, so referrals is a great way. And if you guys, um, I, this is kind of off topic and then I'm almost done. But if you want a really good kick butt book, um, I have been reading Grant Cardone. It's um, Grant and then C-R-D-O-N-E. Um, he is not um, multi-level marketing or direct sales specific, but more like small business, just entrepreneur specific. And he is like a fireball. Like, his book, If You're Not First, You're Last, is so good. So good. So, um, if you need a good book, that's a great book. And then he has a book called 10X. That's also really good. And it'll kind of light some fire under your Jamberry business, um, especially around referrals. So, um, those are kind of my cold marketing tips. So, if you have ever thought, I have tried everything. I just gave you like four new areas to try, hopefully. Um, so, you've not tried everything. Um, and this sounds really weird and it's really uncomfortable, but if you want to meet people, set the intention of every time you go to the grocery store, you're going to look at the ketchup when someone else is and you're going to be like, oh, do you always come here during the middle of the day? That's so awesome that you have a um, job that lets you grocery shop on a Tuesday at noon. And they're going to be like, oh, I'm between jobs right now. Oh, 
well, that's kind of cool. You still grocery shop at noon. And then they're going to be like, what do you do? You're here on a Tuesday at noon. I am. I sell chanberry. And then it opens the conversation. So if you really want to get out of your comfort zone, talking to people when you are out and about and setting the intention of being that person when you're at the grocery store or you're in line or wherever um, will definitely help you break into your cold market. Um, I still run into so many people in Phoenix that have never heard of Jamberry. So there is, I think, like four or five months ago, there was 16 team manager or higher in Arizona, like in Phoenix, in the Valley. And the Valley's big, but still 16. That's a lot. And every single day I run into people who are like, no, I've never heard of it. Or I've heard of it and I got invited to one of those Facebook things, but I've never tried it. You want those girls. So set a Manny night up with them. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys got some great information. Um, I'll give um, Kristen a list of different um, networking sites that I utilize. If you're in Arizona, you should be coming to my area meetings. I don't know if there is anyone from Arizona here. Um, and there's a great networking site if you are in Chicago or Illinois area or if you're in Arizona called um, the Arizona One's NetworkingPhoenix.com. And Chicago is Networked Chicago. Um, and I know that those have like 90 plus networking sites on them a month. So a lot of good stuff. Um, you can also look for, if you're looking for networking um, groups, um, you can search those people on LinkedIn like insurance brokers, um, realtors are great ones. Um, trying to think who else but people that only do business by referral those are great for people to say where do you network where do you find your customers where are you meeting all of these people at because chances are they're meeting them somewhere so you want to know where that somewhere is um, just be very cautious when you are networking um, there are some groups um, that make sure you know all of the information before you join a group um, there's certain organizations, like there's one called BNI, and it's a great, great um, organization. It's a lot of money, um, and they require you to, you know, go every week. They also require you to give a certain amount of referrals to the group. Um, you know, if you're going to be gone, you have to find a, like a fill-in. So I don't like those. I don't like to be told where I have to be every week um, or who I have to give referrals to. I want to give referrals to people that I like, that have helped me before, that I'm partnering with, or that I work with. So just be careful when you are networking. Um, don't pay anything before you really know that you're going to like the group um, and like the structure of the group. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And you can always follow me at Olive jams on periscope so i give some card jam lessons to my team sometimes um, and to other jamberry consultants and then some you know great tips and ideas too whenever i have the epiphany so you can follow me at olive jams on periscope so thank you so much you guys you guys rock stetson says bye too